Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. This is a black horse sign of black and asking you to hit that like. I mean hitting you asking you to hit that share button first to benefit others before you hit the like or the subscribe button, because they would only benefit me. And frankly, as I've said, the message is more important than the messenger. And uh you've seen the title. Now the re-uploads are probably about eight or nine videos that I put up years ago, but they got very few views because my channel was new and the subscriber base was very small. I mean, a lot of them were up before I ever had any subscribers at all, and that's okay. But this one, uh, this time I, I took them down because they weren't getting any views, but they were important and they would explain a lot of points that uh, would give proper context to my platform. So sometimes when people uh, want to disagree, it's okay that they just feel a different way. But there are times when people think that we disagree and we don't, but they think they're telling me something new. And I've already agreed with their particular points. In order for them to know what these are, it's best that they hear these videos. So along with the new content I'll put out, I'm also going to put these re-uploads up as well. And I'm going to label them re-uploads so that if you have seen or uh, uh, heard the videos before you, and you can remember them, you don't have to listen again. But if you don't remember them, that means you probably didn't see or hear them. And, you know, in that case, then uh, go ahead and give it a listen. But in either case, hit the share button. In either case, because remember, I want y'all to benefit. You don't know my name, so there's no aggrandizement in it for me. I don't live among you anymore. Uh, I don't live in the same nations. But where I do live, I'm free. Now, this being said, um, I'm going to point out a phenomena that I've seen. Assalamu alaikum. Ki I'm going to point out a phenomena that I've seen. And this phenomena is this. Every time there's a reference to the religion of Islam in my title or in a hashtag, the views automatically go down. No matter how many views the video before and after it got, the views in that particular video go down. And yes, I'm salty about it. It's not because I'm trying to force a religion on you. I'm just trying to put you up on something that's beyond game. I'm not putting you up on game. I'm putting you up on something. I'm putting you up on winning. That's what it is. I'm putting you up on truth that goes beyond game because game implies deception, as I've said before. I'm putting you up on real info. But I'm not asking you to take my word for the information. I don't want you to do that because I'm not responsible for your salvation. I'm not capable of being that. I'm not a messiah. I'm not a spiritual guy. I'm a man with some information. It's worked for me. It's worked for others who have tried it. I want you to know about it. I also want you to know about the pitfalls, right? So that's what I'm trying to get you all to understand. You uh, would probably not listen even if there was a reference in it to Christianity or to Judaism or to other religions for that matter. You probably wouldn't. But I'm not talking about them. Because, see, our people have tried just about everything else. You got black Buddhists now. But when they go into Thailand, which is a heavily Buddhist nation, they still got these signs up to say uh, no black folks allowed in certain places. Now, it's not all over Thailand, but these things do exist. If you ask these people what their faith is, they tell you they're Buddhist. Right? And you can't tell them that they can't do it according to the religion. You wouldn't be allowed to tell them that. There's nothing that expressly calls them to do it, but there's nothing expressly prohibiting them from doing that either. Well, guess what? Uh, we try Christianity. Most of you now agree that you ain't going to tolerate, you ain't going to take uh, Christianity, at least not as it's preached in the majority of Western churches. You're not going to accept it. Okay, I get it. Because they're going to come to you with this, you got to turn the other cheek and you got to forgive. We need forgiveness, but then they turn around and abuse the fact that humans need forgiveness by telling you that you have to forgive every oppressor on the planet as long as you're the victim. But the minute you fight back, nobody has to forgive you. That's what you're told. So I understand we, we tried it, it didn't work. It could have been an instrument of liberation at many times, depending on how you understood it. But at the end of the day, many of us said, you know what? You still got to pray to a man. And this man didn't say that he was God. So why would we pray to him? He was praying to God. We want to pray to the same God. Okay, I get it. So you couldn't stick with it. All right. Ancestor worship. Many of us had that back home. 
a lot of us back in the motherland were actually Christian. Many of us were actually Muslim. Many of us were uh, following tribal faiths in which we would call upon ancestors. Okay, well, uh, the people coming in to grab us and snatch us were largely Christian. And they were the ones that did the most and did the worst. You're gonna say that there was an Arab slave trade, but that was an Arab slave trade, not a Muslim slave trade. When the Christians came, they said they were doing it in the name of Jesus. That was the difference. And the Christians came in and eventually they never enslaved any other race of people after that. Whereas at least when the Muslims came in and they weren't really practicing Muslims to begin with, that they were doing these raids. When they came in, they were not limiting slavery to only one race. They grabbed anybody and most of the people they enslaved were their own, to be honest with you. Talking about the Arabs. So only the Christians were the only ones, specifically the white Christians, were the only ones to come in and legally colorize and racialize slavery, limiting it to black people and only black people. After they tried it with the Indians. Okay, so we got that. And the ancestors did not save us because, well, they were human beings that lived and died like us. And we know people can do a lot more when they're alive than when they're dead. So we were calling on the dead to do things that even the living couldn't do. We learned our lesson there. There were Muslims that got grabbed up. Some of you say, so obviously Allah didn't save us. Well, he never promised to save human beings from any and every calamity. That's the first thing. Neither in Christianity nor Islam did he promise that. But then let's also look at the tradition of the revolts. Slave revolts in the Americas began with the Muslims. And I'm gonna give you the names you can look up uh, in your research because I don't want this message to be very long. Number one, you can look up the Wolof Revolt. I mentioned it before. I believe it was in 1521, but I could be wrong about the years. But it was the Wolof Revolt in Hispaniola. The Wolof Muslims and two other Muslim tribes out of Africa started it, and they allied themselves with the Taino, the Taino Indians. Starting with the chief of the Taino named Enriquillo. And I'm sure that was his Spanish name forced on him. I don't know what his Taino name was. But it started with the Muslims and they joined up with another oppressed group of people against a common enemy because actually Islam is about liberation from oppression and even bringing justice to relieve those who are oppressed when they're Muslim and when they're not Muslim. That's actually a part of the faith. The Arab ain't going to tell you that. The Desi from the subcontinent, Indian or Pakistani, Bobblehead ain't going to tell you that. The Afghan ain't going to tell you that because they're allied with the oppressor. They're looking up to the oppressor. They want the oppressor's acceptance. They think that is the way out of oppression. <laughs> they don't want to tell you that actually uh, that five letter J word that'll get you arrested is the answer to oppression. They don't want you to understand. They don't even know it themselves at this point. They've convinced themselves that that's not it. Now, where did they get that? Well, they got that idea, actually, from Gandhi and from Martin Luther King Jr. They weren't Muslim. So they're taking a non-Muslim approach to solve a problem that affects Muslims. But the Muslims who were first kidnapped, they understood this. And while they did get kidnapped, they also fought back. And they put fear into the hearts. Many people have said that actually the Haitian, Revel the Haitian Revolution started with a Muslim named Bukman. It was called Dutty Bukman. He, they called him Bukman because he could read books. Well, the language he read in was Arabic. <laughs> yeah, they didn't tell you about that, did they? Most of the people that he was uh, uh, fighting alongside the free were from Dahomey. Now, the Dahomeans were not, most of them weren't Muslim, but they knew that there was such a thing as Islam. So they had a vague understanding of it, and that was why they called him Bukman. They didn't call him Quran or, uh, you know, something like that. The other thing. You can look and find out about the history of black Muslim rebellions against oppressors from, number one, Uthman Donfodio. He's an author. He lived a long time ago uh, in Africa, and he's dead, but he wrote a book. I, I don't remember the name of it. But Abdullah Hakim Quick knows the name of it, and you can look up videos from Abdullah Hakim Quick. You know how to spell Abdullah? Hakim is spelled H-A-K-I-M and quick, just like a uh, quick fast and in a hurry. That's how you spell his name. You can look up Rudolf Bilal Ware, W-A-R-E. You can look up his videos. He'll tell you. 
So I told you to research and check and see if what I was telling you was true. Now I'm giving you the search terms by which you can begin to research and you may find more information that I don't know and if you do, please tell me. Come back because we can learn from each other. But I want you to understand that when I put a reference to Islam in these videos, that is not the time to just scroll past it and wait for me to put out the next one. If you don't agree, you don't agree. At least hit a message out and let somebody else hear it too as well so they can make their own decision. Because if it, wasn't a, if it was not a solution, I wouldn't tell it to you. Only question is, do we actually want a solution? Or are we sitting up here venting, uh, upset, because every solution is going to require some level of self-discipline? And we don't want that. And nobody does, I get it, but you get the idea, you understand what I'm getting at. I'm going to re-upload some, uh, re some old messages because they got a few views and I understand why they did. But in the future, I would appreciate it if you subscribers or just one-time viewers would stop scrolling past simply because there's a reference in the title to Islam or in one of the hashtags. Like automatically, now it's irrelevant when in fact that may be the most relevant video you see. Because I can tell you now, if I didn't put this out there, if I didn't explain that, but I told you that I'm Muslim, many of you one day would come back to me angry and you would say, why did you not tell me about all of these solutions that were in the religion? You were sitting on it the whole time and you didn't tell us about it. You irresponsible sellout. You see? Now, you would say it, but you would also be correct and that's why I'm telling you about this now. Not because I hate you, not because I want to force it down your throat. It's because I want you to find out about it and I want you to come back and give me some more information. And the day that you become so convinced of this that you come back to me and you tell me that I'm not, I'm not invested, I'm not faithful enough is the day that I'll be happy. I look forward to the day you come back and you say, no, nah, Blackheart, my faith is stronger than yours. I look forward to that day. I want someone to come along and tell me this. I want the bulk of my people to say this. I don't want them to come back and say, oh, Blackheart, you saved us. I want the bulk of you to come back and say, bro, you need to get more into this yourself. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for you to come back and tell me you need to turn your 89% devotion into 100%. That's what I'm looking for. Not the aggrandizement, but the encouragement. I hope that this has been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.